Welcome to Our Voices on the Yard, where Black artistic excellence meets everyday life. I'm your host, Denise Woods. Join me as we explore and celebrate the achievements of the Black artists that attended conservatories and fine arts programs from around the world, starting with my alma mater, the Juilliard School. Giving voice to the truth is all that we have. And it's the most powerful thing we have as artists. I've always taught myself that I'm at the bottom. Mm. There's nowhere else to go but what, Denise? Uh, up. I'm just telling the story of our Juilliard, the Black experience, because it hasn't been told. This is Our Voices on the Yard. Welcome back. I'm Denise Woods. This is Our Voices on the Yard, and this is part two of Lisa Gay Hamilton's wonderful interview. I want to take this moment to introduce you to a little known fact. A little known fact about a black artist, and, and this one happened to have attended Juilliard. And, but little do you know that this person attended Juilliard. So I want to share it with you. And it's so apropos that I share it with you on the day that I'm introducing Lisa Gay Hamilton. Because if you didn't see uh, last week's episode, I'm just going to give you a little bit of what I, I shared. Lisa Gay Hamilton was in group 18 at Juilliard. I was in group 8 at Juilliard. But there was someone at Juilliard who was in group 5 that came before us. A beautiful black woman that you all know, very famous, but very few people know that she went to Juilliard. <laughs> Thelma from Good Times. That's right. Her name is Bernadette Stannis. Bernadette Stannis left Juilliard when she got the role of Thelma on Good Times. And she never looked back. And she would have been in her fourth year when I was in my first year. And I always felt, ah, I wish I had had that woman there. Um, because when I got to Juilliard, there were very few blacks. There was another black woman in my class. And Lisa Gay Hamilton is very fond of saying that she was the only, I do believe she was the only black person in her class, group 18. It's very unique, very unique and very tough times during that era. Um, but... The wonderful thing about this show is that we're going to share those tough times, but we're going to really celebrate the good times because to the person, everyone that I've interviewed has said, given a chance to do it all over again, they do it again. They might change a few things. Of course, we're older now. We would change, we'd look back and we'd change a whole lot of things. But the choice to go to Juilliard or not go to Juilliard Everybody to the person, including myself, we all say, yeah, we do it again. So enjoy. This is part two of Lisa Gay Hamilton. You mentioned Bea Richards, and we were going to get here because that, to me, is your, 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 the stellar moment of your career mm -hmm. to have done what you did. And I'm not going to give it away. I want you to tell people what you did with this wonderful actress's life, who she was, and how you how you met her. When when you discovered that this spirit needs to be honored, people need to know who she is. I want to tell her story. What what happened? Did you meet her doing a move doing on Beloved? I actually, ironically. The first time I met Bia was... I can see tears coming in your oh, eyes. The first time I met her was for a ballet song thing. Really? I think, yeah. Uh, the play. The, the, the play, yeah. The, Athel and I, it was, it was like a... Oh, you know what it was? It was Inner City Cultural Center. I remember. Came to a performance of ballet song. Oh. And so it was a little... Oh, sorry. It was a little cocktail kind of afterwards thingy. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a conversation with Bia or something like that. But mm -hmm. I, I, I was very ignorant. I didn't know who she was. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. You didn't have a clue. I didn't have a clue. You, had, you didn't, hadn't no, no, seen no, no, any no. of her work? 
I, but you didn't I make did, a connection? But yeah, I just, you know, okay. yeah. yeah. I, you know, yeah. But, you know, sadly, she was always the old lady. I just, you know, she was just... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she was so, so lucky. Yeah. And I was so surprised that she was so young when I saw her. I was like, oh, oh my gosh. Because she always was. She looks so young anyway all the time. I just saw her recently in the great, uh, the, the James Earl Jones Great White, great Hope. White, White Hope. His mother. She had that crazy wig on her head. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But her work. Oh, my oh gosh. yeah. The body of work mm. is tremendous. And I think what is so sad about the warriors and I'll and I'll I'll be a little snarky okay and you're very complimentary about my work and my career and I thank you for that I consider myself a struggling actor mm -hmm. I I I you know I have not arrived in that magical sense that maybe Viola and Angela Bass and other people have arrived mm -hmm. um, and so I don't have that luxury I don't have that kind of status and so I've always considered myself a struggling actor and there is something to in a weird way never attaining that millionaire multi-millionaire house in Malibu status because of political stances that I may take or Come on. I, I might speak about, about Palestine, or I might not do a role. I mean, you could call me silly, but I couldn't stand Orange is a New Black. I got that script, and I, I, didn't, I didn't care for it mm -hmm. personally. So there are things that I actually would not do and don't do to this day. I have the luxury. I'm married. I've got a husband who's a tenure professor. Gotcha. But prior to that, I still, there were things, there were things on the practice I would not do mm. and got into arguments with Mr. Kelly because I was like, that's not fair to make my character do that. That's not, you know, why? There was an episode where we found out that Steve was a single father, that I had an abortion, and that there was a 13-year-old girl who was pregnant by her boyfriend. This is all one episode. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. and I'm like, my character can't be pro-choice? What the hell? What the hell? What do you mean? <laughs> like, are you crazy? Yes. Um, so I think, you know, that's what's so amazing about meeting Bia was that there was already, as I feel with you, this connection you have with people sometimes. And it is because of your journey. Yes. It's because of your age. It's because of your yes. journey. And it's because of the experience that you've had. And it's also how you see the world mm. and what you want from the world and how what you want as an artist and how you want to tell that story and what stories you don't want to tell, what stories you do want to tell. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's actually what has kept me alive mm. is that. Yeah. You know, being able to be on law, or, law and order special victims unit and, you know, play the wife to some cop and have a black woman write a script where it was so offensive to my character. Wow. And to be able to say, you've got to be kidding me. She was a Republican. I'll out her now. I don't okay. know her name. <laughs> but... <laughs> I love you. I just love you. But the stuff she wrote, and for me to go to the producers and saying, you can't possibly have that character say that about me. Wow. I was invited back, and I said, if she's writing a script, I don't need to come back. I don't need to talk to her. I need to see her. And I mean that. I'm nobody. But I feel strongly but enough to say, I don't need to do that. I remember it was early on in the practice when that episode came in, and... My sister said, you're going to get fired mm -hmm. if you go talk to these people and tell you just you just got on a show, Lisa Gay. You can't possibly. I said, but I can't possibly wow. say those words. That would be wrong. That would just be wrong. And and to Steve Harris's credit, who had much more power in the show than I did, helped. And we rewrote some stuff and mm -hmm. presented it to David. Mm. And, but I'm. That's my journey. Right. That's, you know, my cross to bear. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I um, 
operate. And I, I can't stop that. That's yeah. just how I'm, I'm, I'm wired. I think I might have told you for, um, um, where was I just in? Three years ago, uh, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, oh. So, uh, to to Aaron Sorkin's credit, um, he attempted to bring it to present day. Yes. In the sense that he knew he couldn't have a white savior anymore. He still is a white savior, but he couldn't have it quite like that. So the estate yeah. let him tweak. So for Calpurnia, he decided to give her a stretch, a little more text. Okay. And because if you read the book, she doesn't say anything. You don't hear from the black community. They don't talk to anybody. They're scared, which mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense that they would be fearful um, of the white community. It makes no sense at all. But anyway, so I, I, it's hard for me to say, not to say to Mr. Sorkin, in the book, Mr. Sorkin, um, Tom was shot 14 times. In the play, you put four. <laughs> why, why do you do that? It's pretty significant. Yeah. Like the brother that was just shot 90 times and 60 hit. Yes. That's pretty significant. Yeah. I think that number's pretty important. But for, it's his, hey, it's, I'm just visiting. It's his world. Yeah. And you want to put four, put four. But mm -hmm. I'd, if you could explain that, I'd appreciate that. Yes. I don't really quite understand. It's just because that's what I want to do. Well, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I'm asking the question. Yeah. Or yeah. for me to say to Mr. Sorkin, don't you think it's weird that Calpurnia doesn't at least acknowledge the double standard of justice because Tom gets killed by white men, but I'm sorry, his son mm. gets away with murder mm. or attempted murder and this white guy who killed, you know, how does that work? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't write you a monologue. I said, I don't want a monologue. There just has to be a sign of acknowledgement that she knows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I said, all I want to say is, ain't that something? He said, we'll say it. I said, good. Broadway production, I get to write a line, and the line I wrote was, ain't, ain't that, that something? something. But so, it makes sense. So at the end of the play, before my very last sentence, I say, well, ain't that something? Hmm. And the entire audience knows exactly what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Because of course they see it. Mm -hmm. I don't. I have a hard time not saying. And let me say you something. When the Broadway production came back, they gave the character the line. The line. <sighs> yeah, because you go to that deep place that that you you investigate in that same way that connects you to Bea Richards. That same deep investigation. That is so necessary because iambic pentameter and poetry is just fluffy. It's just fluff in words if you don't start from that place. I say when I did teach Shakespeare, I would say, you know, adhering to the structure and to the verse and to iambic pentameter is secondary, really, because if you don't have this other stuff first, I could care less about whether the meter is right. And, and what the meter does is it helps you take a deeper dive into what those 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 stronger the, words exactly are the stronger, words, the stronger right. more on the stronger beat of the I am mm -hmm. you know it helps you it helps you investigate so that's what it's it's a tool mm -hmm. to get you to that deeper place mm -hmm. and 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 girl you you go there in every performance I was blown away by Valley Song, because that was the first time I had seen you. Mm. I didn't know, I had heard mm. about the Lisa Gay Hamilton, Lisa Gay Hamilton. <laughs> it's like, okay, who is this Lisa Gay Hamilton? Who is she? Who is she? Still trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then how our paths connected mm -hmm. and keep connected and stay connected mm -hmm. and keep reconnecting is just, is so beautiful because I too loved Bea Richards and knew her long before she became 
known even by the black community, by the black arts community. We all knew her. Here but just, in L.A., yes. people really, really knew Bea. Absolutely. And, you, that's, and, I, and I, New York as well. Yes. You know. Bea Richards was an African-American uh, actress, playwright, poet, director, dancer, um, playwright, um, who was born in 1930, hmm. who... Um, July 1st, 1930, I hope that's right, whom uh, was a, a, an important figure in the um, African-American community, both in theater and in film and television. Yes. And the, who was nominated for uh, Best Supporting Actress for her role in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Um, she was, she, and the, the story was that she always was the, old, the, the mother. So she was the mother, and, and, and sometimes younger than her co-star, who she playing the mother to. So Sidney Poitier's mother, and guess who's coming to dinner? James Earl Jones's mother in um, The Great White in Hope. The Great White Hope. Um, literally everybody's mother. And she was born in 1930. I mean, she clearly is the same age, if not younger, Sydney than James Earl Jones. Yeah, right, right, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but she had that deep soul. I mean, her soul. Uh, you know, I think, I think it's so important to have a sense of the world mm. and to have an opinion about it and not be afraid and not be afraid of it and yeah. and and be a I think like me meeting her was just in the right place at yes. the right time doing the right kind of work I mean for her to uh, live with a family who mother and whose husband and wife were leaders of the Communist Party um, in the 50s, um, McCarthy era, um, in did, what state? Did, New York. Yes, I thought so. Yes. The Pattersons, Mary Louise yes. and William Patterson. Yes. Um, uh, to be a part of, as a result of knowing them, she got to meet Paul Robeson, she got to meet Du Bois, she got to meet Alice Childress, she got to meet any and everyone you could possibly think of. Um, 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 uh, uh, Francis Williams here in LA, mm. um, just the greatest figures ever in both politics and arts having to know, um, but she herself being this deep soul who grew up in a family whose a father was a preacher and whom, yes, and, and, and who at, you know, this is the 30s and the 40s saying, you know, you are black. You're not yes. colored, you're not Negro, you are black. Um, to, for Bia Whom was a very, very dark-skinned black woman with the, with the wide nose and mm -hmm. full lips and nappy hair and to um, be a queen and carry that and always carry the truth, who by great fortune got to meet Frank Silvera, who himself was a character actor from yes. Jamaica, who could, because of his looks, could transform and be a a Mexican, he could be a Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. he could be so many different people, but he started a theater called the Theater of Being. And this was a theater here locally in LA, whom Bia, this was her Buddha, her guru, mm -hmm. and um, taught her the definition of the word being, B-E-I-N-G, which is mortal existence in a complete and perfect state, lacking no essential characteristic. Mm. It also means love, it also means God. It's actually in the dictionary. Mm -hmm. And then Bia says in the documentary that I did about Bia that she was like a cork in the bottom of the sea that once Frank gave her that definition, she popped up, she said. She just, she just popped. It gave her the freedom to be. Yes. And that you are not perfect in the sense of you're done, but you're perfect in the moment. Yes. In the moment, you're just fine. Yes. And you're changing every minute that passes. And ideally, the, it's, a, it's a circular motion till you finally die and you reach whatever your religion may be, but you reach the ultimate. Yes. You know, you, reach, you finally reach love. Maybe it's God. Maybe it's, you know, Allah, whomever you think it is. But it's this constant evolution. Of ascension. Of, to a higher being, to a higher sense of self. And of a higher sense of being. As an actor in particular, yes. that takes you somewhere. 
that takes you somewhere. So I, I, I never had the opportunity to be in a class with Bia. What I got to do was be a friend with Bia. Okay, so this takes me to how did the documentary come about? How did you say you became her friend and then you said, I've got to do something on this woman's life. And how did you find the money? And how did you how did you make it happen? Because you've gotten so many awards and so many accolades. And I have an assistant who who I absolutely adore who does all of my research for me. And mm -hmm. she's done research on everybody that I've that I've interviewed in hopefuls. She came to you and she was floored. And I said, I'm going to I'm going to introduce you to Lisa Gay Hamilton. <laughs> she says, Would you please? Because her her she studied at an HBCU and her drama teacher is a descendant of Bias. Mm. And I'm sorry I'm getting ready to cry because this is how this is what this is all about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um she said she studied that film. She studied your film. Did she go to the University of Mississippi? Yes, yeah, she did. She studied with uh, Tonia ha Tonia Stewart. That's exactly who she did. Yeah. That's uh, yes. Yeah. That's exactly Tonia who it is. Tonia does this wonderful, wonderful dramatic monologue um, in the retelling of her experience she had with Bia. I'm going to mention. She's going to love this. Her name is Shamaya Shamaya Alexander, oh, hey, Shemaya. and she is. I mean, she said, you have no idea how this film changed my life. Mm. And, and, and so all of the roads in this interview have led to you discussing your relationship to Bia and how you came to this film because it is changing lives, Lisa Gay. I'm serious. It's um, just, it's just Bia amazing. Bia is changing lives. Yeah. She was an extraordinary person, very spiritual, very mm. Afrocentric, mm. very tied to the ancestors. Mm. and Everything um, that I strive to be, that we all strive to be. And whom believed in the power of the artist, mm. who believed in the power to change the world, mm -hmm. and that no matter what role you played, you have the opportunity to catch the imagination, you know, Okay. Um, and I had done a film called Beloved. Yes. That Jonathan Demi directed, and B and I did 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 Harpo. Did, I guess it, I is guess it, is it a was, Harpo production. I, I it could be okay. Uh, I know, but I know that that Oprah was a she attached. started she, she started, started. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I okay. mean, it, it was her film, right? And. Um, that's a funny story in itself how I got that. But mm -hmm. um, so I ended up, there was a wonderful casting director by the name of uh, Howard Stewart. I don't know if you remember Howard Stewart. I do. I remember his breathing. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was very in poor health. But. <laughs> yeah. So I had to audition. No, he asked me if I would do a reading of Beloved. And, um, and I was like, yeah, sure, I'd love to do it. So it was Sam Jackson. It was Lauren Hill. It was uh, Oprah. It was, and a whole bunch of other people, and, and Mary Alice. Oh. And, and, and oh. so I'm telling the story only because it's, it, it's related to the journeys of how things happen, mm -hmm. and, in, and in particular with black women. Mm. And so at the reading, read through Jonathan said, I want zero acting. I really, This was really, at the top, the very top of the, the reading. This the top of the reading. Okay. The first time they had ever done a reading. And he said, I'm just, I just want to hear the words. Mm. I just want to hear the words. And Mary Ellis started to throw down. What? She started to throw down. And I was sitting right across from her. I was like, well, shit. If she gonna throw down, I'm gonna throw down. <laughs> and, I, and I remember that they hated Mary Ellis for doing that. But I swear that's how I got that job. Because I was like, well, uh -uh. she's telling the truth. Why can't I tell the truth? And at the time, the script was really 50-50. Gotcha. It was 50 younger Seth, 50 older Seth. And Beloved is Toni Morrison's, the great Toni Morrison's yes. book, Beloved, and there was a movie that was made of it. So we were doing the first read-through of the film once everyone was cast. And it was very exciting. We're all there. The, you know, um, uh, uh, It was... I cannot remember names right now, so I'm going to skip names. Tanya Newton. Oh, of course. Kimberly Elise, Ugh. Oprah, Bia, and the rest of us. And we're reading this the script. And in the background, you just hear, mm. 
Mm. Weeping. Oh my God. And everyone keeps looking at Bia. She, is she okay? And she's just somewhere. And then she does her lines and they're fabulous. And, and Jonathan knew. And he said, um, Bia, would you like to say something? And she said, they're here. They're here. Responsibility. I'm telling you, they're watching us. Oh my God. And I was like, oh. So she just happened to be my my next door neighbor at the hotel. And I would see her walk by. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid to talk to her. Of course. And then one day she said, Come in my room. I was like, Okay. <laughs> And we were just talking. And I can't remember what we were talking about, but I just remember just crazy, like crazy. Wow. But I was also still, I was in my own world of my own work, the work that I had to do in Beloved. It was very, very physical, very, very emotional. And it was always at the height. It was yeah. never a low, it was always. And, um, after we shot the movie, and I don't even remember the scenes that we were in. I, I remember the scenes, but I, I, I don't remember the scenes. And um, do you know um, Pearl S. Sharp? Okay. Sandra Sharp? Sa S. Pearl Sharp, sorry. I know. No, no, S. Pearl. S. Pearl is her name, but she go. I knew her back okay. when she was Sandra. And um, She probably wouldn't want me to say that. We might want to come. But yes, I... <laughs> You so do remember. I do know S. Pearl Sharp. Because, okay. of course, she talks like this. Yes, she does. S. Yeah. Pearl. S. Pearl. Yes, yes. And S. Pearl saw me, uh, I don't know, somewhere in the street one day, and she said, Bia would love for you to visit her. What? And I was like, what? S. Pearl is like that. And I said, what? Yes. She said, well, I just I think that she would love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. She lived less than two miles from me. What? Less than two miles. She lived on Sycamore, between La Brea and whatever else, off of Washington. Mm hmm And um, the wow. first time I went to visit her, I left the house and I was vibrating. Yes. And I felt like, oh my God. Mm. And then she started to tell me these stories, and I'm like, "What, Paul Rope? Paul Ropes? I'm so, what? You know, you know the what? <laughs> yeah. You did what? You you directed what? You wrote what? And so, Jonathan Demi and Ed Saxon um, invited Tandy and I to join them to go to one of the AFI for Jodie Foster. And so we went, and we were, went out afterwards. And Jonathan said, "What do you want to do next?" Now, of course, I'm not ready for that question. I don't know. <laughs> Give me a job. That's what I'd like to do next. Just what's your next job I'm getting? And I said, well, I, I said, I, I tell you this. Bea Richards is this amazing woman. I know you've cast her, but I don't think you really know who she is. She's this, she's this, she's that, she's this, she's that. And he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Literally the next day, he calls me up and he says, are you ready? I'm thinking, oh, my God, did I miss an appointment? He says, are you ready to direct a documentary on Bea? I was like, look at the universe. I was like, Jonathan. He said, no. He said, I'm not. It's not a documentary. Documentary. I just want you to just go interview her for a few hours and just. And he said, I already called Bia, and she's willing for you to come. That's how it happened. Literally. I had no intention on the planet. I'm not a filmmaker. I never thought of being a filmmaker. I never thought of documentary. And. I, I didn't even say a film on Bia. I just said we need to do something right. on Bia. Because I, you know. And so, long story short, um, the funny story is, two funny stories. Uh, Jonathan put me in touch with Joe Viola, who was my producer on the show, my right-hand man, mm -hmm. Jonathan's dearest friend. Mm. And Joe put me put us in touch with a, a camera crew a company who was just going to give us one camera person. They were going to do a couple of hours for free for us. Wow. And the Do you know, that's huge. Huge. Yeah. And I said to Bia, okay, so, 
and he, she had already met Joe. And I said, so it'll just be Joe, me, and the cameraman. And, and, just three, and he, she says, well, I don't want any white people in the room. I said, pardon me? <laughs> she said, I don't want any white people in the room. <laughs> They're all white. I said, for beer. <laughs> They're all white. And she says, well, I guess you'll get back to me. <laughs> Literally, I got the quickest class on turning on a video camera and putting on a lavalier on her and putting up a lamp and filmed her. And the next day, I said, we found a black cameraman. And she said, I'm not doing it. I said, Bia. Now I should preface, when I met Bia, she was suffering from complications of emphysema. Okay. And way into it. Mm. As she said, she didn't respect the cigarette enough to know its power. Wow. Because she was just a smoker. Gotcha. And I was devastated. That generation. I said, Bia, please. She said, I don't feel good. I don't look good. I, I can't remember anything. I just, I said, I respect it. I said, let's do one thing though. Will you watch the tape with me? Mm -hmm. Just watch the tape with me. And if you, if you don't want to go any further, I, cool, that's you. I said, but I think you should at least see yourself. And, and appropriately be a sat Indian style on her day bed. What? She did. She sat Indian style. <laughs> and I, and then, you know, put the little VHS of those of you who are still alive who know what a VHS is. <laughs> You're old enough to know, rather. So we stuck the VHS tape in, and she just got closer and closer to the screen. And she was crying. And she said, that's what old age looks like. And she said, I'll do it because that's the truth. I was like, this is really deep, man. Right. <laughs> I hope I can keep up with her. because. Right. So 70 hours of footage later. And and you 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 capturing it? Did she allow a camera? The, black, she, cam the black camera. The black camera. Savanto Green, who, uh, an extraordinary human being, he did the filming, but sometimes um, Bia lived by herself. And so oh, the community wow. in many ways was taking care of her, sure. but not the greatest care of her. So I sort of stepped in and because I was doing the documentary, I joined the, the village that was helping to take care of her. And sometimes I would spend the night there or I would, oh. you know, figure out how to get her food and things like that. And, um, and so yes, Savanto did, but there were times when some of the footage, you can tell that I did it because you can't hear her very well. So you'll <laughs> always know it's me when you see the documentary. Oh, Lisa must be filming. <laughs> Because um, I forget to turn a lot of layer on. <laughs> and um, Jonathan would give me little quick little lessons. Um, and I would take the tape to him and if I would be in New York or something. And he would say, you've got to stop talking. Let's let her go. Stop asking her questions. And it was true. I would ask me a question. Of course, she wouldn't answer that question. She'd take me on the, on the tour of the world and then come back and say what was the question again and of course she would answer of course she answered it and the way she answered it and i think what's extra extraordinary about the film is that it is bia dying oh. and saying this is my last chance and sometimes i'll put my teeth in sometimes i won't sometimes i won't pull my hair piece in sometimes i won't and um, sometimes she felt terrible um, and in many ways Bia was guiding the whole thing she was just doing the whole thing and I'm just there mm -hmm. I would ask a question or two or I would say um, Bia um, so when did you really really feel like you really you know made it you know and she said no 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 she said freedom is living that's mm. making it. Mm. That's that's what is the real deal. Mm. Um, mm. Or she'll say things like, you know, 
in the film in the introduction she said you know you may not be a millionaire but you can win and you so want to tell young people that yes. I you know my 11 year old daughter knows everything about every Mercedes and Lamborghini and just obsessed with cars and obsessed with wealth and and she doesn't come from a household like that but this thing you know this, sure. that's so that, that this generation is filled with right now there's nothing to do with self it has nothing to do with being selfless and the music doesn't have anything to do with that and the, the you know nothing has anything to do with community mm. nothing has anything to do with helping nothing has anything to do with really 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 telling stories that are imaginative and creative and avant-garde and important and funky and sometimes boring and sometimes sappy but stories that we can live off of and live from mm -hmm. and that's all Bia wanted for young people. Mm. Bia would have people knock on her door while I was taping her and there was these two men who said Bia we love you so much we wrote you a song mm. and she would let them in I'm like yo I gotta get my film shot here I don't have time <laughs> this. but she would sit there and allow them off key as they were as long as the, mo as the song was to give to her because they needed to do that. Yes. That was important to them, you know, to, to do, as my husband says, ask me what you want, mm -hmm. you know, ask me what you want. And sometimes it's just listening. Mm. Sometimes it's just being mm. there. Mm. Being. And, and not yeah. saying anything. Or so, doing anything. So Jonathan funded the first 50,000. I was on wow. the practice and I finally went, oh duh, that's why I'm on this dumb show. It's to fund my film. Okay, yes. it wasn't a dumb show, but you know. So, so, so I put up the other 50, mm. and then Bia died a year later. Mm -hmm. And um, through the course of that year, her health declined. Through the course of that year, we watched her move out of her home that she's been in for 25 years mm -hmm. and pack up mm -hmm. and get on the plane to Mississippi, where it's the worst weather you could possibly be for someone with emphysema. emphysema. But she had nowhere else to go but where her niece lived. Um, and then it took on a life of its own. I, I, I swear to you, I really do feel whether it's, it's our encounters together or whomever I may, just, just the world, how it happens Yes. by coincidence. And I do believe that things happen in some great, like how does that? Synchronicity. How does it happen? Um, I said, if I had a dream, it would be for Bernice Johnson Regan to do the music to this movie. What? And if I had a dream, it would be Jerry Allen to also do the music. And I had a rough, 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 rough cut. I didn't know, I didn't know uh, Bernice from Adam. Mm -hmm. And she's a tough cookie. Mm -hmm. And I sent her the thingy. She just sent it to me. Because <laughs> what do you have? And she said, oh, my God. Wow. Didn't know Jerry Allen from anyone. We found her manager, sent her the copy. She said, I'm on. <gasps> Didn't have an editor. A friend of mine, I did a film with him, and he shot a, a short that was up for an Oscar. And he said, I don't know if this editor will see you because she's, you know, she's won an Eddie. She's big. She's like big time in the documentary world. I doubt. But maybe she could tell you who to go to. Mm -hmm. She said, yes. <gasps> and she has many documentaries on HBO. She said, I don't know what they'll think. I don't know what they'll say. I'll just give it to them. Let's see. They said, OK. Gave us the finishing funds. What? It was all Bia. Yeah. I didn't do any of that. That was Bia. Yeah. Before she died, I went into David Kelly's office and I said, you need to get Bia on an episode. You need to get Bia on an episode. He called her the next day and said, I got an episode for you. She won an Emmy before she died. Not me. Yeah. Bia. <laughs> but what Oof. Bia always did say is, mm -hmm. speak it. Yes into existence. You want to do a podcast? Do it. Speak yeah. it. Yeah. How do you want the podcast to work? Do it. Speak it. Yes. Yes. Speak it. It may not always happen, but giving voice to the truth is all that we have. 
And it's the most powerful thing we have as artists, Amen. as storytellers. Is our voices. Our voices. Our instruments. Yes. Musician. Opera singer. Yes. Writer. Director. Yes. Um, telling the truth. And those productions, those actors who don't let me down, who are constantly telling the truth, um, and who are political beings. You know, our greatest political being in the theater community, the film community, next to Harry Belafonte, is Danny Glover. Oh, absolutely. Without doubt. That is, and, and, is, and is such an unsung hero. Yeah. And is not given the credit and due, whether it's saving the trees, yes. whether, I mean, you know, going to Cuba, yes. you know, it's just, you know, endless, his commitment to unions, mm -hmm. and he's always on picket lines with people, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and trying, and, and, and is producing interesting work from his production company. You may not even get to see the films, but he's doing it because he believes in it. Mm -hmm. um, that's the kind of artist that that I love and that you and, are and that well I not I wish I'm not I think children take over your life <laughs> you know <laughs> at, 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 at a certain point yes but <laughs> to 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 this point what's the title of the film so that people can google it and find it and how is it accessible it's called Bia a black woman speaks mm. and I'm proud to say that HBO relicensed it, it uh. again so you can see it on HBO for the next two and a half years, which is great. Which is wonderful. Um, Women Make Movies is a film company that has it. Um, if you really, really want it, and if you really, really want it, call me. I'll give you a free copy or something. Else. Well, how do how who, how do we get in touch with you? I mean, how do how does somebody who wants to hire you would hire you? How do we stay in touch with you? So I you know you're not go big. To my website. I know that you're not a big social media person. I am not. It's terrible. I don't. <laughs> it's okay. I, I I don't tweet. It's okay. I don't Instagram. I'm scared of all of it. But um, if you go to my website. Which Lisa is Gay. phenomenal. Oh, thank you. LisaGayHamilton.org. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see where my reps are and, and you'll see the I body of my work. I am just elated. Your body of work has been phenomenal. You've got to come back because we didn't talk about your time at Juilliard. Because <laughs> everything after Juilliard, that's why I wanted to start. We we didn't get back. We didn't even go back to that hell hole. That, <laughs> <laughs> that broke me down. Blood, sweat, and tears on the floor at Juilliard. That's what we all say, isn't it? Blood, I think, sweat, I think, and tears. Oh my gosh! I think uh, Viola says it's the the um, the, the jail yard. Uh, she refers. But you to. know what? I love that place. Mm. I wouldn't be anywhere, anywhere, anywhere without that training. I'm going to tell you, to the person, everyone, who we have interviewed. Am I right, folks? Everyone to the person has said the same thing. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. So. And I think it was just that the, I got, I didn't get all the teachers you had. I got the next batch, but I think we both had Liz. We had Liz. We, we had, had Robert. Robert Williams. We, I had Edith Skinner. You had Tim. Did I you have Tim? Tim. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Tim, Tim Monick, who is my mentor. I dedicated my First book to Tim. My mom, my Aunt Sylvia, and Tim Monick. How is he? He's wonderful. Gosh. Thank you for asking. He's doing well. Yeah, he's doing really well. Just spoke to him the other day. If you speak to him, please, I don't know if he'll remember me, but tell him. He'll hello. remember you. Well, you know. But, but, but it, please. I will. But it, 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 it's wonderful, like I said, to the person, be it the dancers, the singers, the actors. You know, it was, it was tough. Very tough. It was tough. And especially as as artists of color, yeah, being there is a doozy. It's a doozy. Well, we'll you'll come back a second time. I'd love and to. We'll you will. Of you'll course. come back. All right. I love running my mouth. <laughs> and we love having you. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for doing you, this. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you for sharing Bia with us. Oh. I, I think it was so important that people knew about her, about your trajectory, about your work. As a 30-year-old woman playing a 15-year-old girl. I, I mean, these are just gems, you know, how you walked into that audition. Did I say the name of the movie? Bia, A Black Woman Speaks is the name of the movie. That's a great place, too. Bia, to, A Black Woman that's Speaks. That's a great place, too. Directed by? 
directed by Lisa Gay <laughs> and produced by Jonathan Demme and Joe Viola and Netta Armian and myself. And it stars Bia. That's wonderful. It stars Bia. Thank you, Lisa Gay Hamilton. Thank you, Miss Denise Welcome. Wood. <laughs> You'll be back. I'll be back. Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks so much for spending time with us. Find us on whatever podcast platform you use. Subscribe and leave us a review. Thanks a lot. See you next time.